Okay, we're, we're recording now. So again, welcome. Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, we have Eric Voigt joining us by phone today. So I'm sorry that you won't be able to see him in person, but he is joining us uh, by phone. He currently serves as a first line manager in the Science and Technology Intelligence Directorate of the US Army's National Ground Intelligence Center, or NGIC for short. He also serves as a volunteer recruiter for NGIC's Human Resources Office. So thank you for volunteering for that, Eric. That's uh, very nice of you. Um, prior to joining NGIC, Eric served over 21 years in the US Army in field artillery and intelligence assignments. He served in multiple locations in the United States and around the world. He is a 1995, a proud 1995 graduate of Penn State University's College of Education. He attended both the, uh, it was the Delaware County um, branch campus, it's now referred to as Brandywine, um, and also University Park campuses. So um, thank you again, Eric, for um, joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to um, share my screen um, with Eric's presentation. Eric, if I'm uh, too slow in um, moving from uh, screen to screen, uh, just let me know, okay? <laughs> Okay, thank you, Stacy. Thank You're you for welcome. that kind introduction. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this information session about the U.S. Army's National Ground Intelligence Center, or NGIC, as employees refer to it. Um, Stacy, thank you for that kind introduction. And could you give me a sense of how many folks are visiting, and is everyone from University Park, or do we have participants from the Commonwealth campuses as well? Um, I do not know if everybody is from University Park. It is open to University Park and all world campus um, students and maybe other ones. I'm, I'm not positive on that. But um, if any of the students want to uh, pipe up and unmute yourself, um, and you can certainly do that and let us know if you're from a, another campus other than University Park. Hi, my name is Claire. Um, I'm actually at University Park right now. Thanks, Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, I'm Logan. I'm also at University Park. Hi, Logan. And hi, I'm Andrea. I'm actually World Campus, um, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. So. Oh, hi, Andrea. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. Hi, I'm Serena Gray, and I'm in, at University Park. Hi. Perfect. Thank you all for joining us. Um, can you see the screen? It should say National Ground Intelligence Center. Everybody good? Okay. All right, Eric, take it away and hopefully I uh, do this justice for you. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, Stacy. We are on the, the cover slide, which um, shows the title of today's information session, which is resume writing and applying to openings with NGIC. Um, I very much appreciate all of you as students in the College of Liberal Arts as a um, College of Education graduate with a social studies education emphasis. Um, I spent a fair amount of time in the College of Liberal Arts taking classes that were required to complete that major. And over the next 30 to 45 minutes, I'd like to acquaint you with what NGIC does, who our customers are, and how you can prepare for NGIC employment opportunities, including three that are posted and open for application on Nittany Lion Careers through Friday, September 18th, 2020. We'll talk more about those toward the end. If you have any questions during this session, um, I can't see the Zoom group chat, so we'll, we'll try to um, work through questions at the end. And thank you again to Stacy and to the College of Liberal Arts for hosting this information session. I would rather be in State College or any of the Commonwealth campuses meeting with you in person, but this will have to suffice for now. Stacy, if you could go to the next slide, please. The first thing, what is NGIC? NGIC is the U.S. Army's Intelligence Center. We're headquartered in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we are the Department of Defense's experts on land warfare intelligence. And what that means, um, put more simply, is that we conduct intelligence on foreign armies throughout the world. Could you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. 
one of the key things to understand about NGIC and how it fits into the bigger picture is that we are one of 17 intelligence community organizations within the United States intelligence community. And you can see the shields of each of the 17 depicted on this uh, graphic. And of course, I've put a red square over the U.S. Army shield because that's where NGIC resides. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. NGIC is headquartered, as I said, in Charlottesville on the lovely Rivanna Station Intelligence Campus. Rivanna Station is a U.S. Army installation, and we share this installation with elements uh, or other elements of the intelligence community, including the Marine Corps Intelligence Activity, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the Defense, Agen Defense Intelligence Agency, all of whose shields are listed at the top of the screen. Next slide, please. So what is the intelligence community? It simply is a group of the 17 executive branch agencies and organizations that work separately and together to conduct intelligence activities necessary to conduct foreign relations and protect U.S. national security. The IC consists of two independent agencies, eight Department of Defense elements, of which NGIC is one of those, and seven other elements of departments and agencies. Uh, perhaps the most famous intelligence agency within the intelligence community is the Central Intelligence Agency, and we are an intelligence community, or IC for short. We are an IC partner with the Central Intelligence Agencies and all of those others that you see depicted on the screen. Next slide, please. And Stacy, if you could, um, with credit due to the Washington Post, I'd just like to present a quick two-minute overview of the intelligence community, what each member of the intelligence community does, just to give you uh, a better sense of what that means. And if you could please let me know when that is finished. Thank you. We'll do just one moment here. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm working on it here. <laughs> Can you see a blank black screen? No? Okay, just one moment. See, Eric, you're not the only one with technical difficulties. <laughs> Okay, are you seeing the screen now? There's going to be a video playing. Our French is operating. Okay. Start. Let's 
Sorry, guys. <laughs> There are 16 different federal agencies gathering intelligence from the U.S. government. In 2004, a 17th, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence was set up to oversee them all. Here's what to know about America's intelligence community and how the different branches operate. Start with the armed forces. Each service has at least one major intelligence organization to support its information needs. Then there are intelligence departments. Those are the offices embedded in other government agencies to enable their missions. The Office of National Security Intelligence, which analyzes major drug cartels and facilitates counter-narcotics efforts. The Office of Intelligence and Counterintelligence, which provides analysis on foreign nuclear weapons and global energy issues. The Office of Intelligence and Analysis, which focuses on domestic threats. The Bureau of Intelligence and Research, which provides analysis for the Secretary of State and Ambassadors. And the Office of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, which focuses on international economic issues. Finally, the national agencies that help advise the Director of National Intelligence. Those include the CIA, which collects and analyzes foreign intelligence to inform policymakers. The NSA, which mostly monitors foreign information systems for signals intelligence, collecting data, including cell phone and email traffic, for intelligence and counterintelligence purposes, and sometimes sweeping up information about Americans in the process. The Defense Intelligence Agency, which focuses on foreign military intelligence. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which charts and maps the physical Earth and human activity for national security purposes. And the National Reconnaissance Office, which designs, builds, launches, and maintains U.S. spy satellites. Then there's the FBI's counterintelligence unit, which helps protect the American homeland from foreign intelligence operations here. For the 2015 fiscal year, the White House requested $60 billion for two programs that fund all of these agencies combined. But that's known as the black budget because the breakdown beyond that top line is classified. Earlier this year, two House Democrats introduced legislation that would force the White House to reveal more details about how that funding is actually spent. All right, Eric. Thank you so much, Stacy. And I just want everyone to know um, that I decided I would throw that curveball at Stacy right at the last minute. So <laughs> I apologize for the uh, the additional technical challenges. But I like that video because it's a very short, concise overview of the intelligence community and shows you um, the different organizations that are members, and you get a, a a very brief sense of what each organization does. Could we go to the next slide, please? Okay. Well, who works for NGIC? NGIC employs a very broadly educated and experienced workforce to accomplish our organizational mission. Really, any major in the College of Liberal Arts can help you qualify for employment with NGIC. But as we'll see in the second part of this session, Additional qualifications and experience will help you to stand out to a hiring panel. Next slide, please. Okay. Before we talk about hiring panels, let's talk about how you can find opportunities at NGIC. Foremost, uh, I hope to see each of you interested in, in NGIC opportunities at our Brazen booth next Monday, September 21st, during Fall Career Days. We will be there, so please stop into our booth and talk with us. We'd, we'd love to meet with you and, and talk with you more about opportunities. So I mentioned that there are some opportunities posted right now. Um, there are a total of 12 that you can access through Nittany Lion Careers. Just search National Ground Intelligence Center when you log into Nittany Lion Careers. As I mentioned previously, three of those are directly applicable to College of Liberal Arts majors. They're open for application today through Friday, September 18th, and they're suited to undergraduates, probably seniors, I would recommend seniors, graduate students, or postgraduate students. So if you're, if you're working on a PhD program, we also encourage you to apply. 
Beyond Penn State's fall and spring career days, NGIC opportunities are primarily advertised in three ways, and you can see on the, the graphic, we use the federal government's usajobs.gov website. We also hire through local Charlottesville, Virginia hiring fairs, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we speak about simplicity. And NGIC has its own simplicity homepage, which if you do look at the opportunities posted on Nittany Lion Careers, you will be taken to uh, our simplicity page for some of the openings and USA Jobs for another opening. The, the current announcements we have, um, I think those that are of primary interest to College of Liberal Arts students are on our simplicity page. So uh, there are 11 vacancies there, and of those 11, as I mentioned, three are primarily suited to College of Liberal Arts students. A little bit more about the job sites that we use. USAjobs.gov is the federal government's one-stop hiring website for most opportunities. To maximize its utility, you should create a profile, your own profile in USA Jobs, and create search criteria to deliver openings to you directly. Um, and when I was looking for employment after serving in the military, that's how I um, kept track on a daily basis of different opportunities is you, I set up my profile and USA Jobs would email me the vacancies that met my profile requirements. And when you set up a profile, you can create a new resume in USA Jobs or you can attach your current resume. I will say this, over the last two years, NGIC has begun using college fairs um, such as fall career days, which Penn State hosts next week, and local career fairs to a much greater extent, meeting some opportunities and particularly entry-level positions are not advertised using USA Jobs. So it creates a little bit more of a burden for, for those who are looking for NGIC opportunities, but um, I think with this information that you have here and that we'll continue discussing, you should be able to stay abreast of uh, NGIC opportunities. I also recommend that you monitor NGIC's Facebook page, the link is of which is on the screen for you, for notifications of upcoming job fairs where we will advertise positions because you can view and apply for vacancies posted at local Charlottesville job fairs using our Simplicity website. So even if there are fairs that we will go recruit in the local community here, you still should be able to see and apply for those vacancies. Um, and last, at the bottom of the screen, you can also use the unbelievably long NGIC Human Resources recruitment email address. I think that email address is in the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest address ever. Uh, but you can use that to contact, contact our Human Resources recruiting team to stay up to date on upcoming job fairs and, and other places where we'll advertise vacancies. Um, I do want to caution you, we do not have a large human resource staff that monitors this email address, so please add a little bit of a time buffer uh, when you send an email because it, it could be a couple of days before you get a response. And let's finish this slide by talking about the hiring authorities under which NGIC operates. As a federal government employer, we're currently governed by federal law and regulations, so applications must be completed through an official selection process, and that includes applications through USA Jobs or our Simplicity site or a hiring event. Job announcements may appear for a defined period, such as 10 days or, or more, or they may only be open for a single day, such as um, at a job fair. For instance, if we have vacancies next Monday at the fall career days, you can only apply on that day, and that's a function of the hiring authorities under which we operate. So it varies a little bit, and I hope that's not um, confusing uh, based on all of the, the different timelines and um, websites that, that I encourage you to monitor. But I will say this, 
my goal as a Penn State alum and volunteer recruiter is to post every single vacancy that NGIC has on Nittany Lion Careers. So if we have a vacancy, you should be able to at least discover the vacancy through Nittany Lion Careers, and that's just an effort to simplify where you need to search. Could you go to the next slide, please? So I want to talk about resumes and similar to the differences that, that we operate under for hiring authorities, we do or we recommend um, some differences in how you prepare a resume for an NGIC position. And I think that this may apply more broadly across many of the intelligence community agencies and, and perhaps even other federal employers. So you know that we're hiring today. As, this, as we speak, you can uh, find the openings that we have. And I see no indications that we will stop hiring. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about how to get hired. And let's talk about your resume, which is your calling card that will help you to secure an interview. And I'll say this, in two years plus of directly recruiting Penn State students, my opinion is that the resumes I see are very good. But here are some tips that can help you to customize your resume for NGIC opportunities. Let's start with the, um, the university resources because the resumes I see for Penn State students seem to be pretty consistent. So I assume, and I'll credit the university um, and the resources that are available to you in preparing a resume, um, I think those are very good. And they get you a very good, um, concise resume which gets right to the point, which is superb. However, I'm going to say something that sounds like resume heresy, and that is I actually encourage you for an NGIC application to have a longer resume than you might normally. And two pages is not a big deal for us. Three pages, um, we, don't, we don't mind that as long as it provides the um, illuminating details that we're looking for in a specific job vacancy. So two to three pages is okay. I don't think that's the case in general, but for us, that, that's fine. I also recommend that you specify or list classes, internships, work experience, papers, public presentations, extracurricular activities, or even hobbies that are pertinent to the position for which you're applying. An example of a hobby, uh, my science and technology branch deals with uh, radio frequency communications. So if someone doesn't have the specific experience that we're looking for, but let's say that they're an amateur radio hobbyist and therefore they know about some basic things with radio communications, that's qualifying experience and that can help you to get an interview. So those types of details in your resume uh, can provide or, or can help your, res or your resume's chance of, of getting you through to an interview. And then the, the big piece that I like to highlight to every prospective applicant that I speak with are the four items at the bottom. Your basic one-page resume that, that seems to be consistent with most Penn State students ha, ha, or contain the basic information that we need to know about you and your experience. What I encourage you to do, and this is how you start to get to more than one page on your resume, is take the information on there and make sure that that information conveys your ability to think critically or problem solve. So if you have a, a bullet or a sentence on your resume that is very concise, expand on that a little bit and tell us how you uh, or demonstrate to us an ability to think critically or to problem solve. The next, we need to, we really need to know about your experience or ability writing. 
and this could be anything. It, it could be research papers, it could be term papers, it could be blogs, it could be magazine publications or journal publications. Anything like that is relevant. And again, give us a little bit more detail and more of a sense of your ability to write. The third thing is we'd like to know about your experience working in or leading teams. I remember as an undergraduate and a graduate student uh, some of the group projects that we would do, and I never liked those. However, those group projects can go a long way to demonstrating your ability to work in a team. It doesn't have to be in the classroom. It could be in employment. It could literally be on an, ex, uh, uh, an intramural sports team or if you play sports at Penn State, high school sports, anything that gives us a sense of your ability to work in a team and beyond that, if you've led a team or helped to lead a team, that gives us a good sense of your capabilities within a team and your experience operating within a team. The last is basically public speaking or presenting, your experience presenting um, preferably academic information. However, it doesn't have to be. You could speak publicly about a, a number of different things. And these, this information is helpful to us because as an intelligence analyst, your ability to find and analyze and write intelligence analysis is part one. Your ability to convey that information verbally to non-experts is the other big piece of, of what you would do as an intelligence analyst. All right, so why is this necessary? If you will forgive me over the next couple of minutes, I want to, I want to give you some insight, and this is a little bit detailed, maybe a little bit wonky, but I want you to, to understand how we hire people. And I, one of the things, as I retired from the military and started looking for work, I found out how hard it is to find a job. And I, I just never, I, I couldn't understand what happens when I send my resume, when I apply. How come I don't even get a response at all? You know, what, what's going on within the hiring process? So I want to provide you a little bit of insight into how we hire, and I hope that this will reinforce the importance of these resume tips that we've just covered. NGIC uses hiring panels that typically consist of three people and which are indirectly supervised by a hiring manager. The three-person panel tend to represent different parts of the vacancy, such as one person who might be a technical expert on the, the hiring vacancy, one who might have some related expertise but not be truly an expert, and then one who might have no experience with the vacancy at all. They're, they're just a, a generalist, you would say. So the hiring man manager will establish three to five different criteria against which she or he wants resumes reviewed and then assigns these criteria to the panel so that each panel member can individually review and score resumes on a scale of zero to four points per criteria. The hiring manager at that point steps aside so as not to unduly influence the outcome and a panel chair leads the resume review. Once the panel has scored the resumes, the scores are stacked from highest to lowest, and the panel looks for what we call the first natural break of three points or more between one candidate and the next. Those scoring above that so-called natural three-point break are then selected for interviews. There are some exceptions to this, such as when a panel cannot establish a natural break of three points or more, and the list of interview candidates becomes unmanageable. Once we have a pool of interview candidates, we repeat the previous process, except that the hiring manager can actively participate in interviews as a non-scoring member. Candidates are scored according to, according to pre-established criteria for a handful of interview questions, and then the panel stacks the candidate scores from highest to lowest. With these scores, the panel then recommends a primary, 
vacancy selection, and as many alternates as they judge as most qualified for the position. It's not unusual for an interview panel to recommend four persons for one position. Once this is complete, the hiring manager reviews and decides on the panel selection, as the hiring manager can opt to rearrange the selection order of the panel, but must justify in writing the selection. And it can't be because I like this candidate better than that candidate. It has to be a substantive reason. From here, the list of selectees is sent to NGIC's Higher Level Human Resources Office, which then confirms that the selection was made within federal law and regulation, and then extends the offer to the primary selectee. If the primary selectee declines the, the offer, then the Human Resources Office begins moving down that, that ordered or prioritized list of alternate selectees. So, this is the in-depth detail on how we perform a hiring action, and it, it might be more detail than you need, but I wanted to provide specific insight into how the chili is made, so to speak, and I hope that this drives home the bottom four points on this slide, which is to ensure that your resume demonstrates these things in enough detail so that a hiring panel can make uh, good quantitative assessments of your qualification because the hiring manager, I think, unlike other organizations, uh, does not have the level of influence that, uh, that, that other organizations might have. Bulletized points on your resume might be good enough, but more detail which paints a richer picture will go a long way to helping a panel to score you as highly as possible. Could we go to the next slide, please, Stacy? You got it. All right, thank you. When should I apply? Um, ideally, right now, as an undergraduate senior or a um, graduate student nearing completion or a PhD candidate student nearing completion, really the fall semester is a great time to apply to NGIC vacancies. And this is because uh, U.S. citizenship and a national security clearance are required to work at NGIC. The national security clearance requires an extensive background investigation, which can take several months. So if you apply right now and you, are, you, you go through the hiring process, and let's say by um, October or maybe November, you're selected for and accept a position. At that point, you then begin your security background investigation, which could go as, as long as the spring of the following year. So by the time all of that process is complete, you're ready to start when you graduate. You're, you're fully cleared. You're ready to begin working at NGIC. However, you can apply any time, and you can apply during the spring semester. In fact, I, I would encourage you to. Please come visit us at the, the spring career days as well. And you can begin working after you graduate, uh, but your information access will be limited until your clearance is granted. For example, two weeks ago, a Penn State student who applied to one of my team's vacancies in February began working at NGIC, and she does not yet have her full security clearance, but we were able to bring her aboard early and we're beginning her training so that um, she, is, she can start to learn more and more about her job while also <laughs> earning a paycheck, which is pretty important as you, as you get out of school. So, it is possible for us to, to do that. We do have some flexibility. Could you go to the next slide, please, Stacy? All set. And, and I couldn't help myself. I, I had to put in something that hopefully is semi-humorous. And could we go to the last slide? All right. I think we still have, well, we still have a few minutes. Are there any questions 
that have come up during this presentation that I could answer? So we don't have any questions in the chat right now, but if anybody um, would like to feel free to unmute. Um, if you have a question that you would like to ask, um, by all means, go for it. I guess, um, hi, this is Andrea. I have a question. So you mentioned that a lot of the roles are appropriate for someone in the liberal arts program in general. Are there any specific majors that would help you stand out? I mean, obviously my majors already picked, but I, I just want to know if, you know, if you're coming in with an English degree versus political science, I mean, is that something that the hiring managers or the hiring panels would look at? Yes, certainly. Um, in that sense, your experience does come into play. And I'll give you an example, just my own personal experience. My last science class was senior year of high school, which for me was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I currently lead a team of physicists, chemists, electrical engineers, uh, mechanical engineers who we speak a different language. However, I've had enough technical experience in the intervening time between my senior year of high school physics class and my current position to where I've, I've learned enough and gained enough experience to where I can actually perform this role and that's how I got hired. So, um, you know, again, I'm a college of education, social studies guy, and I don't <laughs> I don't have the same background as really any of my employees, but that's uh, that's where the the experience can help. So the answer to your question is yes, you you can get hired even if you don't have the perfect academic background. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Any other questions for Eric? Feel free to unmute. Eric, thanks for um, telling everyone about the positions that are posted in Nittany Lion Careers. Um, they are confirmed. They are in there. Um, I know that I confirmed those three that were um, applicable to liberal arts majors um, late last week. So they are in there it was starting yesterday. Um, so all good to go and provides the link in there um, with some information. Um, I also put in the chat as well that um, Eric is doing one-on-one -on -one, um, appointments with students that um, had signed up ahead of time. The, the registration for that Nittany Lion Careers happened to have been um, Sunday, <laughs> but we do have one time slot available for 3 p.m. today. They're half hour time slots. You don't have to take up the full half hour if you don't want, um, but they are, um, this one is from 3 to 3.30. Um, if you have not signed up for one already and you're interested in kind of just talking a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with Eric, um, please send an email to LA Network, that stands for Liberal Arts Network, LA Network at psu.edu. Um, it's first come, first serve. So after this session um, ends, I will go into that email address and um, whoever was first to request it and can commit to um, taking part in that. I will send you a link, a special link that you'll need because um, that'll be a different Zoom link. So. That is an option uh, for you if you're interested. Any other questions? We've got some time. Already? Go for it, Logan. I was just asking if we're signed up for one of those sessions later, should we have gotten a, an email with the Zoom link? Yep, you were sent uh, the link yesterday. Um, it came from me directly, so you can be on the lookout for an email from SAE111 at psu.edu. 
um, that was sent yesterday. Uh, so you should have that. If you don't, um, please let me know and I will resend it to you. I, uh, I found it. Thank okay, you. Okay, perfect. Anybody else have any questions or Eric, any last, uh, bits of uh, advice and things that you'd like to share? Uh, no, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. I apologize for uh, the technical difficulties on my end. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you to the College of Liberal Arts for this opportunity. And I really look forward to getting back to campus and meeting people and speaking with you in person because that is so much more fun than speaking into a polycom or a uh, <laughs> or a zoom link. Yes, definitely is. But uh, so that's what happens sometimes. So <laughs> yeah. oh, well, perfect. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording um, right now. Um, but if